Hey everybody, welcome to another monthly update with our very own Jeff Rose, branch manager, Tustin. What is up, Jeff? What's going on, Steve? You know, just another day in the trenches. Hey, uh, I like these calls because every time we get to talk about a few things, and I know today we're, we had some people start, you just got back from Florida and our chairman's elite. Um, I'm always curious what you see going on in the market. And then there's a chance we're playing in a golf tournament on Friday, although you're 50, 50 right now. So we'll hit that last. Yeah. Um, well, where do you want to start? People in the team. Let's yeah. welcome the additions. Yeah. So we did, we, we've, we've, uh, we've brought on two new sales managers, which we're in dire need for just from the growth of our team. I mean, having, we had nine chairman's elite people for 2021. That was just, that's a big number. And that's, that's a lot of time and attention that they need for their clients. And we want to make sure and not leave anybody, you know, unsupported. And so having some more sales managers around the office to help us continue to grow, but also without losing the culture and um, team structure that we have. So that's, that's been critical. So I'm super excited to bring on, we brought on uh, Chad Ulmer and Luciana Coloma, those are two new sales managers. And then we have two new additions in sales, which is uh, Sid and Andy. And so we're excited to have that. And we have more in the hopper and people to join, but, um, you know, making sure to bring the right people that, you know, match what we're trying to accomplish here. And with that too, I know today's Wednesday, not like anybody would know with, with, if they're watching this, but like, this is your first official, all everybody's in the office today too. So like, what's that like for you? Yeah. You know, I, well, over, I've been trying to figure this out all year, you know, and I think most companies, most people, most teams have been trying to figure it out as well. Like, okay, so how do we come out of our new remote work setting? And it's not that we have to come out of it, but there's pieces that are missing. There, there's a synergy and a dynamic to having everybody in an office that one helps bring up the laggers, right? So people that are more challenged or um, they're, they're still growing in their development and their career. We know how we grew as we walked to the office next to us or some peer or some leader in the office and we poked our head in like, hey, how did you deal with this scenario? Or, hey, after you, um, the way I've explained it to some of my, even my top producers, I'm like, hey, when you take a loss at home alone, that can bury you for, you know, it could be minutes, but it could be hours or a whole day because you don't have anyone around you that's celebrating a win to get you out of that funk because you're just at home. So whatever you're, you're breeding, your own environment. But if you're in an office and you just, you know, because some deals fall apart, just happens, right? Someone fell out of escrow and it was a big deal or two deals in a row or, you know, whatever the environment is. And, but someone in the office right next to you that you love and support and you're celebrating with all of a sudden just had two huge deals closed. They're going to be able to get you out of that funk so much easier just talking to them because whatever you're building in your head is not the real narrative, right? You're just creating that. And so um, I've been trying to get people back in the office. We opened it a long time ago, um, we opened our office up, but it's been a select few. And when they come in, they come in sporadic. So they really never had that synergy. They would just come in and they were still kind of feeling alone, you know, four or five people in a 6,000 square foot office isn't enough. And so at the last meeting last month, I asked like, Hey, you know, for my days of thunder reference, like I've watched everyone do their 300 laps their way. I was like, why don't you try 300 laps my way? Give me one day a week where all of us come into the office for the month of May and let's see, let's see what this can build. I don't want you to judge it on one day. I want you to judge it at the end of the month. And let's see if this was actually a growth thing, if this was something that was important to all of us and we're able to continue to build and, and, it, and it was beneficial. And so that's, that's kind of what we're doing. This is day one. So this is the first Wednesday. We did it on Wednesdays. Um, we'll see where we go from here, but so far so good. It's a couple hours into the day and um, it's exciting to see the energy and the people and you know the conversations that just happen being close to one another. Yeah. I mean, this is such a social industry and, you know, everybody learns around each other. And I bet the energy is just going to be great. I mean, people will, this last few years have been weird not being able to do that. So I'm excited yeah. to hear how that goes. Um, all right. President's club. You just got back from Florida. What was it like? What were some of your takeaways and what did you kind of see and learn? Man, it was, it was really good. You know, you could see emotion in people's face, which sounds cheesy, but like, they've really missed being out there and being connected. And, um, you know, for the lack of better term, like for the same word again, like there's like a really great synergy that's created and camaraderie and the conversations and communication that would go back and forth and being able to celebrate last year, or even the last couple of years achievements 
that we weren't able to do in person. And so it was great to be able to meet and like me and myself, right? I was brought in in this pandemic setting, right? In this remote setting. So I got to see people's face as opposed to just on video on Zooms or Teams or everything else. I got to see them in person, shake hands and high fives and hugs. And um, it was great in that setting. And we did get to talk about some of the critical updates. I know some of them I can't share yet, but you know, like even our key lock that just rolled out um, that we finally made public, that's gonna be super exciting. That's gonna be a really great um, addition to our, to our product offerings. That's gonna help our clients that need cash quickly, that don't want to move out of the interest rate that they have just yet. They want to kind of see where things settle and where they land and keeps us busy and keeps us active and growing our database. And I mean, that's the game is, you know, how prepared are you for the next time that we have opportunities to do refinances and everything? And, and you know, how many purchases and how many clients can you help throughout that process? And our, you know, digital first strategies have really helped. So. Definitely. Um... What about like, obviously that HELOC is a big deal. I think it rolls out in the next few months, right? Or sooner? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be, it's, it's, yeah, it's going to be a few months away. I think before it's total capabilities are available. I think it's, it's rolling them out and working on um, some of the crossing the T's and dotting the I's, but yeah, it should be out in the next two months, I think two and a half months. That'll be awesome because I think the whole process is different too, right? It's like literally online application, different kind of methodology than a normal HELOC, probably going through a bank, which is a long process, right? Yeah. I mean, me coming from banking world, that process followed a loan, like a, a typical refinance. And there could be some aspects like, oh, maybe you get away with not doing a evaluation, like a, a, a full appraisal. But for the most part, the only benefit could be is if they did it close enough to a refinance, they could try and pull over the documents from that refinance, but it still ask you for a 10. On our okay. side, in a completely digital process and the estimation being start to fish, finish in seven days is unbelievable. That's, that's, that's hard money timing. Yeah, it is. At, at appropriate, you know, HELOC interest rates. I mean, it's, it's just, that's a game changer. That's a, I've never been excited about HELOCs before, if I'm being super honest, I mean, I've never been in the business. Oh, I'm a HELOC lender, but to have that as a, an asset and then an, a tool for our clients to be able to utilize while things are so fluid and opportunities are changing every time, it might give them access to capital when they need it. So then we can work on a longer term strategy down the road. And it can, helps our loan officers build their database because their database is the hardest part. You know, how do you cultivate your database? How do you care for them? How do you have a long-term strategy to keep them? So that way, when the opportunities present themselves for you to save them money and to, to be an advisor for them, you have people to call. Because if you're just out of business right now and your clients have a 3% 30-year fixed and none of them want to talk to you ever again, how are you going to nurture those clients over the next three to five years, except for to give them a service and a value and you can check in on them and you can do, you know, financial reviews, but, um, you know, to have a right product that can also help them and their family and to continue building your database, you know, seems like a really great strategy, um, short-term and long-term. Totally. And there's some actually great stats out there on like when refis happen, people who have HELOCs tend to do them with the lender that has their HELOC, oddly enough. Yeah, well, of course, especially if it helped them, right? If you brought them value and, and we do a ton of, um, outside services along with just our loans. So it's, um, it's a great product offering. It's very complimentary to what we're already doing. Definitely. Hey, so what do you see going on in Orange County with the Tustin office? I mean, we're, I know you're half builder, half retail, anything unique or interesting you're seeing as far as just spring market with inventory or anything like that. So, I mean, homes are getting a few less offers, a few less being like, Hey, if they were getting 20 before now they're getting 10. Um, so, so it's still, it's still busy. There's not, there's not a pullback there, but there is a commitment to doing deals faster and doing things with simplicity. And I was talking to a loan officer friend of mine that he's a very large producer, a couple hundred million. Um, and you know, he's at one of the big four banks and he's like, you know, I'm hitting 50% of my purchases on time right now, which is that's, I can't imagine, you know, what that looks like long-term for all your peers and partners and the stress that has to put on you. And so, and as the market continues to wade in that direction where, oh, hey, 
for your client to get their offer accepted or to be treated fairly, you got to put in for a 15 day close or a 20 day close that puts, you know, the banking system under incredible pressure, you know, coming from that side, I know what, um, what that means. Right. Yeah. Everything has to go right for it to happen. And it's, there's still some variable that, that doesn't, that, you know, that's just outside of everybody's hands and you got to just hope and pray and you, you know, you, you do all the right things and hope karma is in your direction, but you know, here that, that can be a staple, you know, we can, we're actually working to build, you know, a, a full blown guarantee around a 15 day close as a company, let alone as individuals. So I think that that strategy has really helped us continue to grow in our purchase market share and our partners, realtors, builders have all felt that. I mean, all of them have given us a really warm welcome, you know, from the outside lenders that have been attempted on the builders. And then even from our real estate focus, you know, there's been, um, I think we're actually gaining traction, although, you know, we're losing traction in some part of the markets because interest rates are just moving and the market's challenging. Um, but we're actually, we're gaining, at least in my, my percentage and what I'm seeing in our systems, we're gaining market share at this moment, especially in purchase. I dig it. All right. Well, let's wrap it up with this. I know there's a 50, 50 chance you're playing golf on Friday for a charity tournament with Jimmy Watson and crew. I hope I get to see you there. Cause I'd be on a different foursome and we'd have, have to definitely do some side betting, but um, you do a lot of stuff in the community. I think you have something going tonight. Like what are, what are some of the things you've got that you're doing with your team to kind of keep you guys closer to the street and just the community side of stuff? Yeah. So I think on one scale, I'm just trying to get the team out together to do things right. Cause we're, once we're even doing them together, they start realizing you know, for the few that aren't right. The, they realize the benefits that just can't be done by just doing follow-up calls and emails and fun and, and zooms, like we need to be out there shaking hands and the market is asking for that. Our real estate agents are doing it. You know, if they're hosting an open house, they want to see their partners and peers and, and people that they trust also being outside and working. And so, um, you know, we're doing open, uh, whether it's just like the easy stuff, like open houses, like tonight we're doing a happy hour event and we've done a couple of these and we've done a couple of food trucks and we've done, um, you know, one of my teammate, uh, one of the people, uh, groups on my team, they just did, uh, an angel game client benefit, you know, nice. there was, there was 104 people that came, you know, yeah, yeah, crowd. Were, yeah, it was a huge crowd and that was a great opportunity to give back to your clients. You haven't been able to do this last year, not with comfort or safety or health in mind. And so now people got to go to a game and they got to meet each other and, you know, you can bring some of your partners that are also supporting those clients, whether that's insurance and everybody else, and everybody has an opportunity to shake hands and get to meet one another and spend more time with one another and get that stickiness. Um, and so those are little things that we're doing and we're continuing to building things out. We're doing team building events every quarter, like big, big ones. Like last one, we did K1 Speedway. Uh, you were at that. That was awesome. Um, the next one we're doing is at Top Golf, and um, hopefully this doesn't come out before tomorrow, um, this video, but I'm also surprising our chairman's elite people, um, taking them indoor skydiving. Um, so they get their notification tomorrow. So I'm oh, taking that would be awesome. Yeah. So, so just, just getting out there and doing stuff that's new and different and away from our desks for a little bit. So that we were really recharged and focused when we get back to our desk. I love it. Well, I appreciate you every month. It seems to be something new and exciting and moving in the right direction. So. I'll let you get back to your day and uh, hopefully I'll see you on Friday. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. I trust me. I, I got I got enough energy stored up. I want to, I want to swing those clubs. I, I would personally challenge you to a duel and I think we <laughs> you have a good head to head. I'm ready. I practiced right. this last weekend. I did not practice, but I'm still into it. Uh, but you're the guy that doesn't practice and plays really well. I got to like actually warm up a little bit. So. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. All right, man. Have a good afternoon. Thanks for your time.